532. I say we get this party started. Uh, so thank you everybody for coming. Welcome to our final final public um, community co communities call before the solar eclipse, which is on April 8th, 2024, which is Monday, a week from Monday. And so we just wanted to uh, offer the opportunity to just go over some of the things that we think will be important for the community to know. We'll also give all of you an opportunity to ask questions. Um, so I'm going to start the call. Michelle is going to take over and I'm going to monitor the chat. So if you have questions as we go through the um, presentation, feel free to put it in the chat. We can pause, we can answer questions, and we certainly will have the opportunity to uh, answer any questions at the end as well. Uh, so starting with at the beginning, which is visitation. So what we are seeing, uh, and we have been tracking this for quite a period of time, we are seeing that lodging properties and short-term rentals are reporting high occupancy. We're seeing the majority of the occupancy Friday, starting check-in Friday, April 5th through Tuesday, April 9th. We also know that locations that have made reservations or taking reservations that have sold tickets are um, at high demand. So the indicators that we're able to track have shown us that we are going to have a significant uptick in our region for visitors during the eclipse. First and foremost, we're gonna be busy. So a large part of this call is going to be just talking about what that's going to look at. The, the piece that we're still to be determined is the day trippers. That could be determined by the weather, Perhaps they will be coming whether or not that is to be seen. The one thing that we do know is we recently did uh, two travel shows, one in New York City and one in Saratoga, and the eclipse was the topic of conversation. So we know that there's a lot of conversations going on around the eclipse and people interested in coming to the Adirondacks, you know, specifically as the day trippers, there was a lot of conversation in Saratoga about people that were coming for the day. So we know that overnight we're going to be busy Friday through Tuesday and then Monday of the eclipse. We are certainly expecting to see more people coming into the community for the day for the eclipse. So that's where we are as far as uh, the volume of visitation. And I'm going to let Michelle take over and she's going to talk about the viewing location, events and traffic. Awesome. Thank you very much, Mary Jane. It's, yes, the term designated viewing area, I feel like is like the third phrase that I've said for the past year over and over and over again. But that is something we've been working on with communities. I see many faces that we, I've seen in, in smaller community based meetings over the year, over the course of the past year, really focusing on either, you know, supporting attractions or communities that are hosting events or communities that are just designating designated viewing areas where people can go, they can park, they can um, safely watch the eclipse, um, have you know restroom facilities, and we've been really working to make sure that that's available. So we've developed a website, um, one region-wide website that's called Eclipse ADK. On there, there's this interactive map, which is a screenshot on the screen right now that shows all of the designated viewing areas. And this is the information we have been pushing to out and, and, and helping um, consumers or visitors find over the past year and continue to build, have been building on this information. So this is, um, if you have not visited this site yet, I encourage you to check this site out. If people are asking you questions about where to view the eclipse, this is the location where we're sending people. It also links, and there's a pages that links to the main viewing information for each of our individual regions. There it goes into a lot more detail on viewing in each community, more detail on parking, it's got printer-friendly schedules of events, a lot of different resources to share if you have guests coming, company, or you're looking on how to have fun um, in the days leading up to and during the eclipse. And it's also important to note that, you know, even, even prior to all of these locations being designated, our number one messaging has also been, you know, spring is mud season and, you know, the backcountry is not the place to view the eclipse from mountaintops 
water temperatures are dangerously cold. And that's the message we keep reiterating, you know, save the backcountry for later, for, keep it pristine for another time, keep yourself safe. And really the place to be are these viewing areas where you have that camaraderie and excitement with other people to view the eclipse. And at any time, please um, feel free to drop questions in the chat. You know, chime There's in. a question in regard to uh, what the occupancy in Lake George is. Mm -hmm. Although they're outside the path of totality, um, of course, they have additional um, beds for people that might be staying over and then the day trippers would come north. I don't uh, have the exact numbers there, but the last reports I have heard from partners in the Lake George area have indicated very high occupancy as well. which will indicate some of the day trip visitation. Which is a perfect segue into traffic expectations. So we really anticipate to go along with that occupancy that is starting as early as Friday. Um, we will start to see increased traffic in the area, increased number of people, increased cars on the road. Um, and that will be steady through that weekend, you know, feeling, you know, when we're at near full capacity for that weekend, it's going to feel like a busy, and a summer weekend as we go through. Um, the morning of April 8th and really leading up until that, you know, shortly after two o'clock PM time when the partial eclipse starts, we anticipate that traffic traffic will be very heavy. Um, we're encouraging people to, you know, get out early, you know, make plenty of time to get to your designated viewing area. Then there's the following the eclipse. So, you know, peak totality is around 324, 325 for most of our areas. That time isn't exact, that's just a generalization for the region. Um, but then around, you know, around 430 as the partial eclipse ends and, and the event is over, you know, that's when we're going to see the greatest amount of traffic as we anticipate, you know, everyone's going to be starting their cars and starting that, I hate to say, max, mass exodus of the area. So that's where we want to really share some of um, the information with regard to that impact of that post-eclipse um, time frame. That's the time when we are we're anticipating that it'll be very slow moving traffic, um, with the potential of um, as you're getting to you know there's a couple of areas that we we're really looking at, really localized congestion around those viewing areas. So that map, watching that map around those areas is. Everyone's trying to leave um, certain areas, and in some places, there's multiple viewing areas in a close proximity. That's where you'll see some localized congestion and backups. The other area of really heavy traffic is vehicles leaving, trying to get back to I-87, the Northway, 81, um, as those that, that is one area that's being watched, and there may be potential rerouting if things do get backed up. Um, you know, During the 2017 eclipse, if we looked at what happened out west, you know, there are reports of areas where it was, you know, eight to 10 hours of, of being being in vehicles. So we're really encouraging people in all of our messaging to have water, have food, you know, extra layers, um, be prepared, um, a full tank of gas, fuel up before you leave, fuel up before you go. And um, just making time and, and be patient, be kind. Um, those are the pieces we're talking about um, for people that are traveling in into the area. For residents in particular, you know, we're encouraging everyone next week, not just wait till Friday or Saturday, but, you know, throughout the week, get out and get the things that you, you your essentials that you need. Fuel up your tank before the, the weekend gets busy, or if, so you have a full tank of gas, extra food for your house, um, water, any prescription medications, those essentials, just make sure to get them in advance. Keep the headaches down, avoid the crowds. Um, it's not a time that you have to go out and stockpile for weeks. It's just making sure you have, you're good so that on, you know, Sunday and Saturday, Sunday, and especially Monday, you're not needing to do unnecessary travel um, to go to the grocery store um, and make those runs. Headaches will be resolved for everyone. So just uh, get out a little bit early um, next week and check those things off your list. On Monday, um, as you're, or, you know, trying to avoid any unnecessary travel again, not the day for a grocery run. Um, you know, when you're getting out to view and you're, and you're meeting up with friends and family, or if you have work to, to, to get to, if you can walk or ride a bike, that is encouraged. Um, it'll definitely expedite your return home trip if you're not stuck in, um, in traffic with many other cars. It also frees up, you know, relocating all of our vehicles into parking areas so that travelers are then 
um, you know, blocking driveways and roadways and those, those things. So trying to, those designated viewing areas, if you, if you can get to them or wherever you may be going that day. If it is possible that you can walk or ride a bike, that is encouraged. And if you do need to drive and go someplace, you know, make extra time. <clears throat> Any other questions? It's a lot on transportation. Yeah, there's just a little um, couple of questions I'm just gonna touch on quickly, Michelle. Yes. Um, we do have, thank you, Sue, for letting us know that the Scroon Lake area is nearly at 100% occupancy. Mm -hmm. um, again, that's between the 6th and the 8th, which is Friday through Monday. Sun, yeah, Monday. Um, the Frontier Town is um, a frame is a viewing area, and they will be open the bathrooms as well as they're going to have some easy grab and go food. Um, just so um, that was one of the questions. In regards to um, the glasses, we will reiterate this again, but we have sent glasses to all of the towns in Essex County. Um, they're at their visitor service or their town halls. And there's also um, a significant amount here in Lake Placid at the visitor center. Um, as far as getting glasses, I know that some of the lodging property has glasses, the attractions have glasses, the events, the hosted events will um, have glasses. So there will be glasses around and we're certainly encouraging people to have your glasses whenever you get to wherever you're going, don't wait and be like, oh, shoot, I need glasses <laughs> once you're wherever you are. So put that on the top of your list if you're planning on viewing. Um, for those that have electric cards, it's important to know that if they're registered charging stations are mm -hmm. operable so everyone can plan accordingly, and it would be nice to set, suggest time limits so everybody can power up. Um, we do have a list of uh, electric chargers throughout some of the towns. Um, and I do know that uh, with the state police, they said that some of them are on private property or lodging property. And if it becomes a necessity for some reason that they'll be reaching out to those um, private you know, lodging properties to ask permission to share those. Um, and last but not least, Dave asked if there's a commitment to potentially assist from the county or state level to help with cleanup effort efforts once um, the eclipse is over and I don't know if there's anybody on from the state, but um, that is not something that, you know, the in, that they are planning on doing that's to our knowledge, but we also are promoting at the viewing areas, um, trash receptacles and bathrooms. And, you know, we hope that we have the necessary garbage area so that people will be mindful and we've been messaging that and messaging that to the leave no trace and to you know whatever you bring with yeah, uh, you take uh, with you yep uh, uh, my place will have um uh porta potties and uh there will be uh, some uh, park police for traffic control as well right we all will have limited parking though because but we won't be able to use the fields they'll be too muddy to park Okay. Okay. Hi, MJ. This is David. Thank you very much for, for explaining that. Thank you. All right. You're welcome. Uh, and did you say the charging stations at Frontier Town are up and running? So that's great to hear. And Indian Lake is hosting a community cleanup day on Tuesday. That's awesome. That's a great idea. All right. On to communications. And so, you know, we do anticipate um, cellular coverage on that day with an increased number of visitors, especially as we get closer to that time of the eclipse in totality, where not only do we have an increased use of cell phones, but an increase of people taking videos, streaming, social media, et cetera, um, that it's anticipated that there will be um, that potentially some lapse in coverage in cell service. Um, so being mindful of that, um, we encourage people to, you know, if you are not planning on going somewhere and you're concerned that you need well, that need to make a phone call during that that short window of time, you know, if you are at home and you have Wi-Fi to be able to make calls over Wi-Fi, know where the nearest ground lines are, um, et cetera, if, if that is something of concern. 
But for the most part, you know, like I was, I was saying to my kids this morning, I grew up um, and I didn't have a cell phone, but we had what was called a meeting location. And, you know, if you are going out with a group of people or you have guests that are around um, encouraging people before they go out, especially if they're traveling with little ones or teenagers or whoever, I try to keep track of my husband, um, meet me at the water. I, we always say, meet me at the water fountain at three o'clock, you know, make, making making a plan on how to meet meet up and reconnect with people if you're concerned about um, separating and not being able to text or track one another. Um, that is just something we are encouraging. Um, you know, we like Mary Jane said, how we dispersed and distributed a lot of solar eclipse glasses to all of the different communities, um, along with all of the signage to help people find parking areas and restrooms and viewing areas. We also have been distributing a lot of physical Adirondacks maps so that um, travelers in the area would have a map with them, a physical map um, in case they need to. Um, in GPS, there were some challenges there. So those are some of the precautions that we've taken. Um, and then the other thing with regard to communications is that we've set up a designated Eclipse helpline. Um, that number is 518-621-3682. And we'll have staff um, start, it's working now. We will take a, a short break and pause for Easter Sunday, but then all of next week through the weekend, all the way leading up to April 8th, um, staff around the clock will be managing, or told not eight o'clock at night, will be managing that, <laughs> that um, Please don't call us at 2 a.m. Um, it's <laughs> not around the clock. <laughs> I'm just checking, please. We don't. <laughs> I know I have those thoughts at 2 a.m. You write it down in your notepad. They call us um, in the morning, but we do have a line dedicated to um, just answering those questions. They have information on uh, compiled on all of the viewing areas from around the region and also what sources to get people to for more um, information. So that is the number that's out there and is available to both residents, to visitors, to business owners. If you have a question, um, please take advantage of that hotline. Um, and that is- And also, um, Michelle, our understanding from having our emergency services and state police and local and county police call last week that uh, there will be a um, a rock center in Ray Brook, and they will be dispersing numbers that we can give to people for specific questions or, you know, um, you know, obviously if it is an emergency, definitely 911. Um, and then if it's other questions that, you know, we need to call the number to find out an answer, et cetera, but there will be other lines of communication to other resources. Mm -hmm. We just don't have those numbers at this point. Um, right. sorry, didn't mean to interrupt you, but I just wanted Perfect. to let you know. So, absolutely. And if people are looking for those numbers, you know, if we don't have the answer, we may say we need to get back to you, but we can help connect you with the right resources for those answers. Right. Um, final preparations, Mary Jane, I'll hand it back to you to talk about some of yeah. the final things. Thank you. And there was a question here that I just wanted to answer before we moved on that the street lights, um, you know, street lights, community street lights that are lighting the, the main roads where people are driving, they can't turn those off. There is safety issues. But on those uh, at the viewing locations, we are when where we can, if there are lights, um, requesting that they turn them off the timer or you know the the sensors so that um that they don't come on when it gets dark mm -hmm. so the majority of those places are and you know in there's plenty of places throughout the Adirondacks that are very close to your house not out in the woods or in the on waterways that are far enough from street lights that you will certainly have the experience so we feel comfortable with that um Going back to some of the final preparations, um, we did touch on the glasses. Again, they are throughout the community. They will be at designated viewing areas. Um, and then I, if anybody's having a problem finding glasses, feel free to uh, reach out and we will certainly help you find glasses. One thing to know is when you need to wear the glasses. So the partial eclipse is going to start uh, right you know, after 2 p.m. If you're going to be watching that partial eclipse, you definitely need the glasses then. You don't need them during the total eclipse, which is only, you know, about three minutes because it'll be completely dark. But then again, you will need them after that, um, the after the 
total eclipse starts to um, you know, go in the other direction. If you're going to watch that, you'll definitely need the um, glasses then. And just as a reminder, and I think that there's been so much news and so much conversation, and we've been so submerged in this for so long. I think we forget one of the most important things is this is, and of course, I, and I don't know if any of our staff has ever experienced this, but people say that it's just a really amazing experience and that it it's like, it's a memory maker and something that you don't forget, you won't forget. And it's just very special. And so take the time to enjoy it. Just be prepared. That's all. And we're good. We're Adirondacks. We're always prepared. Right. And so, and, you know, do a, a little bit of, you know, preventative uh, traffic control on your own by just getting yourself sorted out earlier in the week. You can walk, you can walk. If you can't, then just be prepared to things to take a little bit longer. <laughs> but enjoy it is the most important thing, I think. Um, and to be prepared. Absolutely. I can go to the grocery store 365 days a year. I get probably once in a lifetime that I can watch a solar eclipse from my community. I know it's once in a lifetime. So I think it's it's something to remember and getting hung up on a little bit of crowds at the grocery store. Um, we're in it and here it's coming. We can't control it. And we're, we're excited about it as well. Um, and we're open now to, you know, if you want to unmute, I think there's a lot of chat here about the chargers. Um, I know that there are glasses at uh, the North Hudson um, mm -hmm. town hall. Yep. And I know that the chargers we understand are up and going in at frontier town. And um, what other questions can we help with? Or anybody have comments? suggestions, yeah. directions, anything, you know, here we are, you have a hundred people. Just We're ready. Um, with regard to those glasses, they have been distributed to many of the communities and we, we want to keep in track of where those pickup locations are. Many will start really, many of the communities are gonna start handing those out around April 1st, which is uh, as early as what, this Monday. Um, and then for events and viewing locations. So you'll probably be hearing more within your communities about glasses being available early next week. I have a question. This is Knut. Um, I don't know. Have you communicated to the towns like Matt Stanley as to when they rec you recommend to put out the signs? I haven't so, talked to Matt about it, and I know he's going to be out of town until late. <laughs> so what we're telling people is, well, for the most part, we're recommending that they go out on Friday so that people that are coming into town for the weekend will see the signs and be able to identify where the parking and the event areas are. You know, it's nice to get that visual as you're coming into town or around the towns where you're going to be staying for the eclipse. So that's our recommendation. You know, okay. also, you know, there might be a percentage of loss between Friday and Monday, but we think for the most part, you know, we don't want people to take them as souvenirs. So, um, you know, some town, towns might be holding a couple back just so that if they have to replace any come Sunday or Monday. All right. Well, thank you. And thanks for all the prep work you guys have done and put into promoting and safeguarding and all that stuff. So thank you. Well, you're very welcome. Yeah. And thank you for joining us. Uh, uh, MJ, this is Dave Hughes, Town of Newcomb. Hello. Uh, on behalf of the town, I too would like to express uh, our gratitude to Roost. Uh, you guys have been a phenomenal resource uh, dating back to the fall uh, when we first started having community meetings and open forums and a lot of energy happening at the local levels as well. So uh, again, uh, I, I believe Isabel is on the call. Huge shout out to Isabel. Huge yeah. shout out to uh, to all of Roost in general. You guys have been a phenomenal resource. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. And yes, you did. It is definitely the team has been, everybody has leaned in, all the regional managers. We have Kenzie on the line. We have Jane and Sydney who did all of the communication outreach. And Michelle Clement, our marketing director, has overseen all of these moving pieces as well as being the Tupper, <laughs> Tupper Lake regional manager for the last few months. So Yes, I agree. A job well done by all roosters.
Yes. And, and thank you for acknowledging through. that. We appreciate it. I'm seeing, you know, a few more and I don't want to take up too much time, but there's Eileen and, and Catherine, both of the Lake Placid and the Whiteface region. And um, I could scroll the screens, but we have an amazing team. And I thank every one of them for their, their work um, over the past year as from Michelle, let's put in an email in the chat. If anybody has any questions, let's just do one email. Should it be, could it be info at or where, whatever you want to do? Not yours, Michelle. I have eclipse at roostadk.com. Perfect. You can also call the helpline. Also, if you know your regional manager on this call, you can reach out to them. They are the best local source because they know, you know, we have the high level with the, the Eclipse ADK site, um, but within each of the individual regions for Saranac Lake and the Lake Champlain region and onward, each of those different regions have their own pages that are built out with every single event, um, downloadable events, parking, all of that information. Um, and so I encourage you to check out those, those pages to share that information. Um, with with people in your community so they know where to go and we're continuing to monitor and update those on a daily basis. I just wanted to shout out uh, to Seth. This is Christine from the town of Indian Lake. Because of your presentations, uh, our community is now, I would say, 80% engaged and um, putting their arms around this event, where when information first started coming out, I would say they were probably less than 10%. So thank you very much for traveling to all of our locations and and, and talking to the people and letting them know what's going to happen. Your, your speeches really made a, a difference. Thank you. Absolutely. You. Seth McGowan with the Adirondack Sky Center and Observatory. Um, absolutely has been in many of our meetings, helped kick off the, some of our initial meetings and uh, has spoken. And I don't, I don't even want to know the number of miles that you've put on your vehicle over the past, I'd say actually probably two years, um, peddling information about the eclipse. You know, Michelle, um, one of the questions that I'm, I missed and I apologize for this, what time is recommended for day trippers to park and settle in for the viewing locations? I'm so glad that somebody brought that up. Thank you, Pat. Mm -hmm. Is, you know, we're telling people to just get where you're going, you know, it starts a little bit before two, okay. bring some food, bring some water, bring a blanket, you know, bring a book, bring a charger, make sure you have your medications and just get where you're going and hunker down. You know, I would say, I don't know, Michelle, an hour or two before the earlier you get there, you're going to get the better spot. We're not saying get there at six in the morning, but you get the spot you want. And you just won't be fighting the traffic and any, you know, thing that might come up. So the last thing you want to do is um, get stuck in traffic and, and you know, try, trying to watch it from inside your car. So we're just telling day, day, day trippers to give themselves plenty of time, mm -hmm. right? And with that time is the supplies, right? Because when you get to some of these viewing areas, you know, some of them that are hosted by... Um, the Olympic Authority and some of the other viewing areas, they do have events going on. And then there's others that you're in a field or you're in a parking lot. And so, you know, yes, there's porta potties and there's trash receptacles, but there's not, you know, you it's a it's bring your own food, water, et cetera. Does anybody know what the weather's supposed to be? Sunny, clear. Mm -hmm. Partly cloudy at last look. I'm voting sunny. It's getting better. Um, I'm seeing better. I've been watching for 45 days and it's been horrible for the whole 45 days, but it is looking better lately. <laughs> oh, that's good. Okay. Last year, we're going to take that one. Tuesday year, is all sun. So if the weather system goes through a little bit faster, we could have a gorgeous day. Last year it was 80 degrees and sunny and I was at white face and I'm ordering a repeat this year. <laughs> Yeah, just to say that uh, I, I know everybody wants to see the Corona, beautiful experience, spiritual, the whole nine yards, but uh, an overcast eclipse is equally as powerful. So I, I, I just want to make sure that people out there know that just because the weather forecast looks like even rain or snow for crying out loud, it's still a very moving experience and they shouldn't stay indoors or 
stay home still come to a totality. It's just a, still a great experience. Still wishing for good skies, though. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I think that's really important to add that because when people say, should I come, it's supposed to be overcast or mm -hmm. um, it's good to know. And then, Kathleen, as far as any specific plans for water rescue or mountain rescue there's not going to be any but any because we've been messaging for the last year to not be on the mountains or on the water uh during this time of year so everybody's going to behave themselves and honestly that's a dec question i think that they're prepared as best they can be it's not a great time of year as far as manpower so and then you know they're going to be fighting the same traffic etc potentially mm -hmm. as everybody else so and, you know, and I've heard a couple of people locally say, yeah, I heard that so-and-so, my friend, or, you know, I had guests coming and they said that they're thinking about camping and, you know, we all have a responsibility to shut that down. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be one voice or one message, you know, if, if, you know, all 200 people tell 10 people not to be in the back country and not to be on the water. We're going to have that much safer of an experience and pick up after yourself. We'll be good host. You be good guest. I think that's a fair deal. Mm -hmm. All right. We're going to let everybody get on with their evening unless you have more questions. We greatly appreciate everybody joining us. We hope you found this time valuable and the information useful and um, see you in a week. Ish. You for everything. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great night. Thank you, Thank you Roosters. Awesome. Great job.